Welcome back to the bluegrass in this beautiful August day. Now one of the first things you're going to notice about this video is that there's a lot of noise in the background. The reason there's a lot of noise in the background is because today we're on an urban adventure. Ella's going home tomorrow, so we wanted to come up and get one final proofing session where we make sure that the skills that we've developed at my kennel, her vocabulary and her physical skills, transfer well to an urban environment. Okay, so just tag along with us and you can kind of see how we get dogs ready to go back and live uh, city life. Okay, so I've got Ella with me. Now you might see behind me, like guys, this is another project I'm working on. Come on, George, let's show them. Guys, my son, my older son, <laughs> he's in the Army, and uh, he said, hey dad, you know, I want a, I want a cool ride to, uh, you know, kind of haul my friends around on so we can go on some adventures when we're on leave and stuff. And I said, okay man, pick one out. You're a good kid, what do you want? And he said, I want a van. And now you kind of wonder, right? You say, well, why, you know, why would a 21-year-old soldier want a van? All right, well, here's what he's doing. He's taking this van. Come on, Georgie, let's go all the way around this van. This is a, a 2010 E350 extended uh, chassis van. It holds 15 people, okay? And what my son is doing is he's sending it off to a place called U-Joint Off-Road in North Carolina and they're going to put a four-wheel drive conversion on the van, okay? So it's gonna be setting up about yay high. We're gonna put 35-inch tires on it, solid front axle, lockers. Uh, we've just put a new stereo in it. We've soundproofed the whole thing. We're getting a decked, uh, lockable storage uh, uh, system for the back. It's gonna be super sick. We're putting a roof rack on it with a fold-up tent. I mean, it's gonna be the sickest thing you've ever seen. So uh, we're gonna start putting up videos here in the next week and document that process. Because guys, I didn't understand how cool like van life was, you know, or, or these van conversions. And when Nicholas started talking to me about it, I started looking into it a little bit more. Hey, it's super awesome. And I'm gonna show you guys every step of that build. All right, but that's coming in the future. Right now, what we have to work on with Ella is our vocabulary and her physical skills so that we can send her home so we can make enough money to pay for the van conversion. All right, All right now as soon as George got in position, the dang sun come out from behind the cloud. So George, you're gonna have to fall in behind me and I'll show you guys where we're going. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to this uh, asphalt pile. We're gonna climb up to the top of it. We're gonna go through this little tunnel over here and uh, then on the way back, we're going to weave in between these concrete barriers and practice uh, jumping up and staying uh, under super high level of distraction, which is the traffic on the uh, exchange here. Okay. Now, when I'm walking a dog, I don't care that they're right by my knee. I just kind of want them to be on this side of my body. I don't want them to pull too much, right? So I want to be able to walk them with a nice slack lead. But if they want to be a little ahead or a little behind or a little over, I'm pretty understanding about that. The only thing I don't like for a dog to do on a leash is to cross my center line. Because you can see if a dog crosses your center line, you see how it pulls you? And if you're going to fall or trip, that's when it's going to happen. I, uh, I have a dog at the kennel right now who did that to its owner, pulled the leash like this, the lady fell, broke up both the uh, bones in her forearm. So super important guys, ha you want to have reasonable goals, but those goals always have to take safety into account. All right, so now, what do we do on an urban adventure? All we're looking to do is find physically and mentally stimulating activities, things that are hard for the dog, so that the dog has to work hard to conquer uh, the, the, the obstacle that we place in front of them, but not so hard that they're liable to fail, okay? Now, this is also true for you. Like, so if you're super athletic and have a non-athletic dog, y'all got to meet in the middle. But be honest with yourself. A lot of you have super athletic dogs, and you guys ain't been off the couch that much, so be careful. As a matter of fact, uh, my advice is don't do this at home. Only watch Uncle Stoney do it. Okay, but look at this. <laughs> look at this big mountain here of asphalt. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to climb this mountain. George, you think I can make it? Probably. <laughs> now, we were up here the other day, and I made George do it. Uh, because he's young and spry, but I'm going to try to do it myself. Come on, Ella. Oh, come on. Very nice. Oh, and I'm going to walk the ridge line of it. Good girl, Ella. You're a very nice dog. Let's see if I can conquer this peak. Hey, what do you think, Georgie? Awesome. Now look, so this dog got up here, so I tell her I appreciate it. Very nice dog. Now I gotta find my way down. Okay, now this looks a little steep for Uncle Stoney. 
So again, this is where polite leash manners really come into play, guys, because if I didn't have this one finger walking, then uh, <laughs> Ella might just take off down here and, and drag Uncle Stoney to his death. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna find a little bit better way down, and I need Ella to trust me to pick the best way down so that she doesn't hurt herself or me. All right, now look, I got a big ravine here, but I think Ella and I can jump it. <laughs> my, my son is laughing at me because he can't believe the uh, stellar athleticism of his old man. <laughs> Come on, Ella, very nice. Now we found us a nice tunnel to go through. Go down here on this side, Georgie. Guys, I don't like to ask dogs to do things that uh, I won't do with them, so I'm gonna go through this tunnel with Ella. Oh. Oh, this used to be a lot easier. Oh, very nice, Ella. Good dog. <laughs> ah, dang, Ella is a champ. Okay, now, watch, I've got a nice piece of culvert here. I'm gonna walk up one, let Ella walk up one. Oh, come on, Ella. Very nice. Now, guys, when you're doing this kind of stuff, be reasonable with your standards. Like, I don't expect Ella to be able to walk on this perfectly, you know, because I can't walk on it perfectly myself. Sometimes you'll have to bend over or bend, kind of bend down. Ella, come on, and call them backwards. That gives them a little bit of extra confidence. Now, I will tell you this. Being able to walk backwards on a pipe takes years and years of practice. So, again, this is something you might not want to do at home. Very nice. Look at Ella. She's perfect. We'll do it one more time. We'll change directions. Come on, Ella. And what I'm working on here, guys, again, is that concept I'm always talking about, which is proprioception. You see how Ella gets up here sometimes, and then when she goes to turn around, she feels like she has to get off? Well, uh, over the course of time, she will get better at understanding. Come on, Ella. Up, 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 up. She'll get better at understanding how to maneuver her body in smaller and smaller and uh, uh, various uh, smaller and smaller areas with various levels of traction. She'll get to be like Uncle Stoney, a goat basically. Come on. Very nice. All right, now it's follow the leader. I'm the leader. Come on, Ella. Good. I'm going to try to get her to make it all the way down this pipe. That's my goal. Oh, nope. Come on, come on. And guys, this goal setting is super important. I want to make sure that I set my goal so it's challenging for Ella, but again, not so challenging that she's li liable to fail. So I'm going to get off here and help her. I just wanted her to make it all the way down to the end here and come off very gradually because what I'm trying to teach her is that like getting onto an obstacle is one thing, okay? Staying on the obstacle is another, but getting down, that's yet another thing and oftentimes the most dangerous. So when you're out working on adventures, like when I climbed that hill a minute ago, guys, the getting up, that ain't the hard part. I mean, it might take the most effort, okay? But the hard part is getting down safely, all right? So it's my advice that you don't do these kind of things, but if you go against my advice and you do them, make sure that you understand. You're gonna put a lot of effort in going up and you have to put a lot of safety in going down, okay? Now we'll just do the same thing on this uh, bigger culvert here. Now look, Ella says, let's go inside. Come on, Ella. And I'm gonna try to convince her to come outside. Come on, come on, nerd. She's like, Uncle Stoney, it's hot. So we're gonna come around. Oh! <laughs> what do you think, Georgie? Uh, sit. Good. Stay. How Batman-like is that, George? <laughs> Dang, nice. Now look at that. Isn't that a perfect dog? Uh, just a few weeks ago, you couldn't even take this dog out downtown because all she did was pulled on the leash, jerked, tried to snap at people and bite people. She just got really tore up. And so her owner, I don't take dogs like this very often, but uh, her owners emailed me and uh, George, you know, he kind of asked, he said, hey dad, what about that one dog that's, that, that's pulling and chasing and biting? Can we work with it? Because George doesn't have all the experience I have. He, he you know, he kind of gets bored with the labs. I never get bored with the labs, but George wants the harder cases sometimes. He wants to do the, do the he wants to do the specialty work, you know? So I said, okay, sure, we can take her. And he said, well, what are we gonna do with her? Like, well, are we gonna do something special with her? And I tried to tell him, I said, son, all good dog training is basic dog training. People call me with dogs like this, 
you know, supposedly, you know, they call them reactive or aggressive or territorial or whatever. And yes, all that stuff has got a grain of truth to it. But most of the time that you have trouble managing a dog, it's simply because you haven't done simple basic obedience. Just a good job of explaining to the dog that you want them to come when they're called, be still when they're told, have good manners from your neighbor's perspective, start social situations off by being calm, attentive, and polite, and refrain from doing activities that are dangerous, destructive, or rude. That's all we do here. Guys, if you'll get your dog on a good basic obedience program, most of the time, whatever fancy problem you're having, it'll just magically go away. Advanced training is just basic training done well. Oh, come on, Ella. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so you just saw Ella display quite a bit of physical skill. She obviously understands my vocabulary because I'm able to communicate to her what's expected. Now we're going to go right over to the road and we're going to see if under a super high level of distraction she can hold things together. Now on the way, I'm going to work on my vocabulary. Up, up, up. Very nice. Sit. Stay. So here I am right by the road. The dog's staying. She understands the vocabulary. She's able to focus under the high level of distraction. So I'm going to come back over here, give her a little high value treat because I appreciate that. Let's go. And then I'm going to go back to the road and we're going to walk down to the van. Now as I'm walking down to the road, okay, the rules still stay the same. I might get a little bit more pulling here. I might get a little bit of uh, flinching or jumping or jerking here. So you have to have a good, you know, good handle on your leash. But ultimately, guys, if you can't walk by a road, then you don't have good basic obedience. You know, so like it, it doesn't do you any good to work on some kind of particular problem. Like if you don't have a dog that has good simple impulse control and attention span development and they, they don't have a good vocabulary, they're not getting enough exercise. So whenever you, you know, whenever you start thinking that you have to do some kind of special training because you have a dog that snaps at people or doesn't get along with other dogs, okay, before you do your special training, you probably need to back up and do your basic training, okay? I mean, really it's kind of that simple, no? If your dog will come when you call it, if it'll walk politely on the leash on your left side, if it'll stop, stop, if sit and stay when you tell it, okay, then what situation can you not manage? You know, like, so if I, if, if, if I have, uh, you know, somebody coming by that makes Ellen nervous and she's like, hey, Stoney, I think that guy is here to get you. And I just kind of whisper in her ear, remember, when we're walking, you're supposed to be polite calm and attentive and you're supposed to stay on here on the left side of my body and not pull on my leash doesn't that pretty much take care of that you know I don't need Ella to like every single person in Sioux Falls South Dakota I just need her to be well-mannered basically we'll accept her being indifferent towards strangers she doesn't have to love everybody but she does need to come when she's called be still when she's told and she needs to have good manners okay and so that's what we come up here to prove today that like just good, simple, basic obedience will give you a dog that can perform under high levels of distraction regardless of whether that dog is kind of naturally impulsive or naturally reactive. The whole point of a good, solid, basic obedience program is simply to teach a dog to learn to control their natural predispositions, right? A month ago, if I would have let go of that leash, this dog would have been right over there in the middle of that traffic and she would have caused a big wreck. She would have got run over, come on. Somebody would have got hurt, it would have been awful. And did I do any fancy training? George, did we do any fancy training? No, sir. No, we just put the work in. Every day we get up, we exercise them, we socialize them, and we make sure that when we're working on our vocabulary and physical skills, that we do it in the widest possible variety of situations. And this is what you get, guys, okay? So, listen, I don't do many of these kind of dogs, these reactive, these territorial, these aggressive dogs, okay? I don't do those anymore because I'm, I'm old and I'm spoiled and I just like to have my nice little lab puppies. But you'll see these coming up a little bit more on my channel because George is young and he wants to learn that aspect of the business, okay? But trust me when I tell you, 
basic obedience first. Just simple, solid, basic obedience solves 95% of the problems in the dog world. So we were just about to get in the van and George was just kind of smirking at me. And I was like, what are you smirking about? And he's like, well, come on, Dad, let's just be honest. You were struggling on those, uh, on those obstacles a little bit. And I was like, you think you could do it better? And of course, being 14, what did he say? He said, you know I can do it better. I said, well, put your money where your mouth is, son. All right, so show us, Georgie. All right, so I've got us on wide angle. We're going to try to chase Georgie here and see if he can really do it better than the old man. If I can get up here, <laughs> I'm going to fall, Georgie. <laughs> Slow down. All right, can George make the summit? Dang, pretty nice. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, so you think you look better than me. I think I did. All right, I'm going to, let me spin around here behind you. Now, I took the Batman way down, okay, and me and Ella looked 100%. All right, so let's see what kind of leader you are. Oh, I got to slide down. <laughs> oh, here I go. Whoa. Dang. All right, now, you still got the culverts and the pipes to do, Georgie. Oh, okay. See, George is pretty good about putting that work in. Sometimes he forgets just how much work the old man puts in, though. All right, you ready to go through the culvert? Let me get to the other side. All right, there comes Georgie. Got a little bit of dirt and debris in the way. Ella's like, hey, let's stay in here in the shade. Now, dude, you're having, to, <laughs> you're having all kinds of problems. I think I got you beat on the culvert. Come over here on the pipes. There we go. Oh, that's pretty good. Now I was sure-footed as a mountain goat up there. I, look, that was a little slip. I think you, I think you're losing a point for that. Now remember, once I got up here, what did I do? I went backwards. All right, so let's see. Oh. Now you got to encourage her, but don't encourage her so much that she loses her balance. Sometimes if you get them too excited, they have trouble concentrating. Oh, did you fall off, Mr. Smarty Pants? All right, and then over here onto the culvert. Oh, come on, baby. Up, 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 up. Oh, you can do it. Very nice. Okay, now we got to do a stay up there on the culvert. Very nice. Come over here and look at Ella. Stay. Hello, Ella. Ella's like, dudes, I'm getting tired. I'm going to just lay down up here and chill. Okay, Georgie, now we got to do a little road walking. Now, I don't want you to let go of the leash on the stay over there. But uh, go ahead and you can do a little road walking. We'll see how Ella does for you. Now, kind of encourage her when you're over there. Let her know being on your left side's good. Now, you have to be a calm and confident leader. You have to be what you want to see if you want that dog to be able to concentrate here by the road. If you're not confident, she's not going to be confident. Let me get up here in front of you so we can see all the traffic. That way folks know we're not faking it. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Slow down a little bit. The old man's having a hard time going backwards. All right, we got a bunch of traffic coming up on your six. Easy. All right. Okay, now we're going to have one semi come past you. Once that comes past you, we'll head over here to the truck. Very nice. That's perfect, Georgie. Now come up here. We'll get one last little stay up on our concrete barrier. Very nice. Yep, you keep a hold of her leash there. Perfect. Very nice. That is awesome, Georgie. You're doing a great job. All right, Ella. You're about perfect. 
All right, George, let's go get an adventure van. Head to our next spot. All right. All right, now we're going to do our everyday activity, which is get some gas for the mower. Now, the first time we came up to the gas station with Ella, it was like having Cujo with us, right? She just was like barking and going. She was real nervous and erratic and running around. And uh, so like today is showing great progress, you know. The gas station, guys, is one of those places where like you can get some really good training in with the dog because one of the things that you don't think about in terms of environmental stimulation is the olfactory sense. But when you go to a gas station, it's a non-stop assault on the dog's olfactory senses, right? You have the petroleum products, people have, are, are spitting like dip and th throwing cigarettes on the ground, food, sodas, just all kinds of stuff. And so there's a lot for a dog to deal with. So if you kind of want to see where your training's at, just get up and go walk around a gas station for uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Lots of movement, lots of noises. The gas cans themselves are pretty noisy. What is that, Ella? What's that gasoline doing? You guys can see when that gasoline started going into the container, like Alex, she, she reached over there like she wanted to smell it. Uh, but then when she smelled it, she backed up pretty quick. She was like, wow, that's pretty noxious. Look, she's sneezing. <laughs> she got her snoot full of those gas fumes. She's like, oh my gosh, what is that? Now look at her smelling around the gas. Hey. No licking the trash can. You can tell she's from South Dakota. She's licking the trash can. Plenty of gas in that one. Here's some music in the background. Remember I was talking to you about it. It's a, like a non-stop assault on a dog's olfactory senses. It's a lot of visual stimulation and also a lot of auditory stimulation. People pull up at the gas station. They're playing lots of different kinds of music, you know. Some of them are playing mariachi. Some of them are playing biggie. You just never know what's going on. All right, now we'll put this gas up and then we'll take a little spin around the parking lot. All right, so we'll walk around a little bit. You'll notice that most people are wearing masks and uh, George and I aren't coming in contact with anybody. Go ahead and get on the sidewalk here, Georgie. So despite what our uh, emperor <laughs> says here in the state, we're not wearing masks today, okay? Oh, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and walk around just a little bit. I'm gonna come up here by this door. And George, you go ahead and go on that side. Sit. Just go ahead and go right to that side there, Georgie. And uh, we're just going to wait here for a second while some people go in and out. A lot of times with the train and you have to be very patient, guys. Oh, go ahead. All right, now we'll go ahead and go back that way. Very nice. All right, and Ella's doing great, so we're going to go back. Come on, Ella. And uh, get in the van, and we're going to go home and mow the yard. <laughs> In other words, we're just doing everyday typical stuff. And that's our whole goal for the dogs that come here, is to be able to do everyday typical stuff. Because when Ella first got here, oh, I'm sorry. When Ella first got here, you couldn't do everyday stuff with her. Because whenever you took her out, she'd bark at people, she'd snap at people, she would lunge and pull on the leash, she'd run into traffic if she got a chance. 
okay? So again, guys, we're getting back to our simple idea about basic obedience is the best obedience. Don't get lost going down those rabbit holes of what's advanced, of what's new, what's cutting edge. Guys, just pick your system, stick to that system until you master it, okay? Because that's really key. The best dog training is the dog training that actually gets done.